Hey footy fans, welcome to the Point of Difference Rugby League podcast. I'm your host Dave and today I have a superstar guest on the show. It's the one and only Warriors OG, the cold hero, Pietro Okasene. How you going, brother? I'm all good, thanks Dave. Uh, nice to finally meet you. Yeah, likewise, man. Unbelievable. Such a privilege to have you on the show. I'm, I'll be very excited about this one. So I hear you're hiding out in the UK these days, in Cumbria. What you doing up there, mate? Yeah, I've been uh, I've been here for 26 years, um, living up in the northwest of England, um, about 15 minutes from the Lake District and 30 minutes from uh, the Scottish border. So, you know, enjoying life at the minute. Yeah, so you're practically Scottish now. <laughs> <laughs> you can speak Scottish if you want. <laughs> How do you enjoy the winters over there, man? Like, it must be cold. Like <laughs> It does get really cold. Um, you know, I just got to wrap up nice and warm and uh, and just go with the flow. You know, it does sometimes hit minus five, minus eight. But, you know, you get used to it. Yeah, you can keep those temperatures. But it gets cold here in Christchurch, but not minus eight cold. Nah, <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> so what you been up to post-footy, man? What you been doing sort of recently um, in your life? Uh, I was, I'm working uh, for a conveying system company. Um, we manufacture and design the uh, conveyors and send them to companies like uh, Coca-Cola or Heineken. So okay. I've been there for six months. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, yeah. On the weekends of that, I'm with my kids, my son and two daughters. They both play rugby and rugby league. So I'm sort of uh, getting down there to watch them play and, uh, you know, enjoy. Nice. Very nice. Okay, man. So let's rewind the tape. We'll go all the way back to the beginning. Where did you grow up and what was it like for a young Pietro Okasene? Well, I grew up in Mangere in South Auckland. Uh, I went to Naiwi Primary, later Intermediate and Mangere College. Uh, I'm the youngest of uh, six. And, um, you know, as a youngster, I used to spend a lot of time in the, playing Space Invaders. Uh, uh, nice. out, most days, <laughs> out most days playing with my mates. And, you know, we had to be in by eight o'clock uh, before the uh, sun goes down or, you know, the door was locked and we'll be in big trouble if it uh, if it was. So, you know, just to do a bit of athletics for Mangan the Bridge. Um, so, yeah, just as a kid, just a normal life. Uh, rugby league on the Saturday mornings. Yeah. And then more Space Invaders. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Yeah, I had a good uh, upbringing. You didn't play the old Street Fighter 2, did you? You know, in the arcades. They were great. No, I was, I was more of a defender. I a defender. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Okay, so where did the rugby league start? Was that right from, like, you know, primary school days or was that um, um, something you just always did? Well, rugby league started um, from, you know, I went, my brothers used to play for Manukau Rovers. You know, back in okay. the day, Manukau Rovers and Manukau Magpies League we yeah. not far from each other. So I think it was about nine. Um, my brothers were playing for Manica Rovers Union. And my dad uh, one time took us over to the league club. Oh. And uh, so that was the first time I ever played league was uh, under 10s. Okay. Under 10s, I think it was. And, and I've, I've been there all my life uh, playing at Magpies um, until up until uh, County's Manica Heroes. So... Okay. Yeah, it's a great club to be a part of. Yeah, man. Um, so Scott Rushton wants to know, did you make any rep sides coming up through those lower grades when you were a young fella? Yeah, I think it started uh, under 13s. Uh, we used to go to Cornwall Park and have all these uh, trials to make the Auckland side. remember turning up and uh, at Cornwall Park and there used to be hundreds of kids, you know, all in their yeah. club, different club, in their club uniforms. And we used to all get uh, put into different teams and then just play, and then they whittle it down to, you know, a few, and then then you've got your your Auckland uh, representative squad. So yeah. I made you know the under thirteens, fifteens, seventeens, and then up into the uh, junior Kiwis. Too easy. So so junior Kiwis. So what was that experience like stepping up to that level um, after was, playing sort of prems grades and all of that? Well, Junior Kiwis was uh, something new. It's, it's sort of um, 
the next thing up from uh, the senior Kiwi team. So, you know, it was really exciting time. Um, I think in 88, we had uh, Bob Bailey as our, as our coach. Right. And uh, I had players like uh, Quinton Pongier and Jason Lowry, uh, no, but... Michael Kelly, wow. you know, Jared McCracken, and Sean Hoppy. Yes. You know, you know, Keep it going. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I made the Junior Kiwis for two years, uh, 89 as well. And we yep. toured Papua New Guinea. <laughs> So, oh, dude, yeah, that's that an was, experience uh, as a young fellow. That was an experience. Yeah, that was a that was an experience. Uh, that was really good, and I really enjoyed it. Different lifestyle, and yeah, uh, you know, it's nice to see uh, a different country for a change and and uh, experience it. Did you experience any danger while you were over there? Well, you know, when we were billeted in twos over there, and, yeah. and uh, we used to stay with the expats that were working there. And the uh, they lived in like high security houses and that you know big gates and barbed wire fences and uh, you know it's we we're, we were just uh, you know they just wanted us to be safe. But yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a bit uh, later on when we're with the yeah, ninety four yeah. kilos. Yeah, yeah, they're right. They're right. We'll save us for yeah, the yeah. All right, man. So. <laughs> So go back to your sort of like more teenage days before your junior Kiwis and even junior Kiwis. What were you like as a trainer? Did you like the hard work of training? Did you like the contact of rugby league? Uh, yeah, what were you like in those years? Um, yeah, I love I love training. You know, from under fifteens, I actually uh, I missed out on the New Zealand New Zealand team in that tournament. I made the New Zealand rest, and uh, and Fetu Taiwa was with in their group as well and wow. um you know sort of after missing out sort of um that's when it clicked to me later on that you know i gotta train a bit harder and a bit more so what i used to do was i used to go down to the local mangere town center you know when yep. all the after hours when all the cars were gone in the car park and i used yep. to you know with my rugby ball i used to simulate the six uh six tackle play and put a kick in and you know chase it so really? I'll be playing the ball to myself, passing yeah. to no one, running over it, you know, play it again, maybe put a kick in, chase it, yep. play it again, you know, and just things like yep. that, you know. And uh, also I went, uh, did some road running and all that just to yeah. do the extra because, you know, you always, uh, if you do your extra, you, you're um, the person that you're, uh, that's got your position. They might be doing nothing. So you do the That's extra right. work, you get the rewards. Nice, man. Nice. I love that. So uh, you said you um, played for the Manuko Magpies back in the 80s in the Auckland Comp. What was the competition like back in those days? And Flash Henry Rawiri wants to know how much of an influence the Magpies were on you and for your career. Uh, the Magpies were massive, you know. Um, my brothers used to play... You know, they were playing the premiers before me. So I used to love going to watch them play at Carlo Park, you know, and always think, well, I wanna I wanna play with these guys. Um yeah. you know, the the uh the top top level of you know the club. Um but coming through as schoolboys, you know, you, you only uh, mainly want to enjoy enjoy the moment, you know, playing and as you got a little bit older into the juniors, it was um, you know, got more competitive. Because yeah. of all the uh, the rep teams that you could be making in that, but uh, you know, in the premiers, there's a lot more experienced players in that. So you got to, you got to just try and up your game and uh, you know learn more. Um, yeah. the, the competition, you know, back then for premiers and that was a pretty decent one. Yeah, because that was before rugby league took off professionally in New Zealand, especially. So yeah. you must have been like a young fella coming up against a pretty hardened and seasoned sort of veterans. Yeah, you know, it's you're playing against ex, ex or current Kiwis. So, exactly. you know, you want to better yourself all the time. You want to you wanna, uh, make an impact and, you know, show your teammates that, uh, you know, that positivity and uh, commitment. So, you know, that was, uh, it was great to experience, um, you know, playing against these guys. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So who were some of the standout players in the Auckland comp back then? Who are the ones you loved coming up against? Well, you know, there's all, there were a lot of brothers that were 
playing for the different clubs. You got the you know, Warren and George Mann at Mangere East. You got yeah. Dean Clark and his, you know, Artie and Vinny and the Solomona brothers at Richmond and you know Arcois. Yeah. There's so many players that you know very talented. You, you know you can't sort of single one out because everyone playing at that level brought something different to the game, yeah. and you know it's uh, it's a joy to watch some of these teams. Uh, you know yeah. when they're playing against each other and that. So yeah, it's uh, it's just great to be a part of it. Yeah, man. So when you were only 17, 1988, rolling back the clock there, uh, you represented <laughs> Western Samoa at the Pacific Cup. So was it a real honour for you to wear the colours of your Samoan heritage? Yeah, of course it was. You know, I was still in college. And, um, yeah. you know, I got a call that I made the team. My brother Kennedy was uh, was playing their team. So it was even, it, was, it felt even better for me. Oh, um, yeah. We went to, you know, it was held in Samoa. Uh, my mum came as well because she wanted to keep an eye on me and you know make yeah. sure make sure I was all right. Um, yeah, it was it was great. We had Olsen Filipino was our captain. Oh wow! And I'd, uh, you know, and just watching him grow up, you know, watching him play for New Zealand, it was like, wow, I'm gonna get to meet this guy and uh, play with him. He's really humble, really nice bloke, and uh, yeah, he actually got player of the tournament in that. Oh, wow. uh, that year, and I think the New Zealand Maori, um, they beat us in the final 20, 26 16. Okay, so you know, that was a that was an experience, uh, going to some or meeting my family as well. Yeah, you know, my uh, cousins and uncles and aunties that I haven't seen for a long time, so it was a great experience. That's awesome, man. Um, so, uh, jumping forward a little, you also represented American Samoa in the 1992 Pacific Cup, but you caught you had quite a few, uh, Lines of heritage through your family, is that right? Yeah, my grandmother is New Anne. So I've got okay. a little bit of New Anne blood there. Um that Pacific Cup ninety two team, it uh, what happened was Papua New Guinea at uh the New Zealand Maoris were um they were hosting the game and Papua okay. New Guinea had pulled out and the pioneer of uh Western Samoa rugby league, uh, the late Swanee Stowers, he was approached and yeah. uh, asked if they can put a team, you know, because because there was an abundance of Samoan players, right. uh, we were able to put another. Those who weren't in the Samoan team, you know, they could uh, play for American Samoa. So that was the first time I got to actually play with my other two brothers, the three of us, my late brother Paul and uh, Kennedy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was a that was a good tournament that year. It was um, I think Samoa ended up winning that That's in the end. So. You know, it was a great experience. Oh, that's awesome, man. Does American Samoa play at all anymore? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. That was a long I've time ago. So, you know. I've never heard of them being in a tournament before until you yeah, know, yeah. I was looking yeah. up your, you know, researching for the podcast. I was like, oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> American Samoa. I, I, think they, I, think, I think they had a team in that 88 Pacific Cup in Samoa. Okay. And then they didn't have one in uh, two years later, but they, yeah, we had one yeah. again, 92. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was great to, you know, play, play with the brothers pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny uh, with American Sama, it was Asini and Joe Famalo who qualified for the USA Tomahawks through like, their <laughs> grandparents' American Samoan um, heritage. It was great. So they played yeah. for America. It's funny, it, it's funny when you said Asini uh, by Malo. In 86, there was the first Western Samoa team. And uh, yes. he, he, actually come, he actually came to my house and yeah. had a photo with my brothers before they went off to the airport. So that photo is still awesome. at home in New Zealand. So That's so good. Oh, mate, he's a legend, man. He's so cool. I yeah, love hanging out with him. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Always feel safe going out to town with the city next to me. <laughs> you know? Oh, well, he's a legend. Legend of a He's boy. a legend, man. Yeah. So I discovered you played a bit of hooker uh, during your younger days before you were converted into a prop. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, I remember when I first started playing, I was playing fullback. Really? Um, no you know, way. When I was about 10, when I was about 10 or 11, and I got. I arrived late for the game, so the coach put me into hooker. He says, "Yeah, you get in there. We, you know, you, you come late." And I've been hooker ever since, right Ooh. through till uh, till I went to the Warriors. Okay. So, um, yeah, that was you know, junior Kiwi as a hooker, everything. 
I'd never played prop before. I had played second row when I come to England, but never prop. Okay. So you're playing hooker. Is those still the days where there's a lot of sort of, you know, cheap shots and nasty shit going on in the in the scrubs? That was, yeah, those those were the days when we could actually strike for the ball. Yep. You know, and uh, I've got that, you know, I didn't have shin pads or anything, and I've got that many scars on my shins. It's <laughs> it's really oh, funny, oh. but yeah, those were those are the ones, uh, the scrums where you can have the loose hand yep. go down and then, you know, have a little biff in the scrum. Uh, did you enjoy that sort of stuff? Oh, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. It was really good. You know, it was part of, part of rugby, wasn't it? So, yeah. I find yeah. most of you guys loved the contact and all that sort of stuff. You know, I think you're all mad, but it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love the contact because, you know, as a youngster, I used to, in the house with my brothers, we used to practice our tackling defense, you know, sort yeah. of technique and try and bring it into the game. Um, you know, I was a big fan of uh, Les Davidson. Oh, he's a big boy. A, yeah, a hitman, you know? So yeah, uh, watching him, uh, you know, he was a bit of an inspiration. Um, so I remember my first Premier game. Uh, we had a home game against North Coast Tigers. And yeah. they have got, uh, well, uh, well, they got the two biggest props, the, the Foo Brothers, Peter and the late John. And uh, I, so I try to, you know, hit these guys. <laughs> so, you know, and uh, I think I was bouncing around a bit and everything, you know, getting bumped off and that. But I don't, I can't remember the result of that game, but uh, I survived it. So, you know, that was an experience. Oh, awesome, man. So uh, let's move forward to 1989. You signed with Carlisle Rugby League Club in the UK. How did that come about? And was this like a full-time professional gig for you? Yeah, it was a professional uh, club. They were newly formed. They were formed back okay. in uh, 82. And that was when uh, Dean Bell, Clayton Friend, and the late Ian Bell, wow. they were playing there at the time. That's and um, so I knew that, you know, with the Manukau Club, the Bells were uh, a big family, that you know, for the Manukau Club. So yeah. after one of the games, I think it was the last game in um, 89, Premiers in 89, I saw Cameron Bell at the club. So I'd asked him, you know, can you, uh, can you get me over to England? I'd, I'd like to experience it. Yeah. Because the year before, my brother, my brother Paul, he, he went to play, with, play, in she play for Sheffield with uh, okay. Thea Solomona and Mark Geyer. So the three of wow. them were the other like, three players that went there. And he used to send back all these videos and articles of him in, uh, at Sheffield, you know. So yeah. I, I thought, well, I want to I wanna do that. Yeah. So the following year when I approached Cameron, um, he said, oh, leave it with me. I'll give you a call. Call back. So he rang back in three days. And he says, I've got you a club. Uh, no. You fly next week. Yeah. I said, oh, wow. You know, I've never, you know. Never flown that far before in my life. I was like, this yep. is going to be an experience. So they put me on a, I think it was the cheapest airline because it took me 35 <laughs> hours to get to <laughs> get to England. I mean, uh, that was fun. <laughs> that was, yeah. We went, to, um, I think it was called Garuda Airlines, Indonesian Airlines or something like that. Okay. So we went, like we stopped in Sydney. We stopped in Bali. And um, I was meant to get off at Jakarta. And really? catch a connecting flight okay. catch a connecting flight on but I got off at Bali I didn't know it was, I thought it was in Jakarta so I got off the plane <laughs> and uh, so I'm waiting in the terminal for my bags to come out and like everyone was gone and oh, the guy come over and said the guy come over and said what's going on you know what's going wrong I said oh my bags are, haven't come out and he looked at my ticket and he says no you're supposed to still be on the plane oh, they're taking man. the ladders they're taking the ladders away from the plane and they were closing yeah. the door, so he was on the walkie-talkie. No, no, no. Get those ladders back. So I got there. Oh, got on the plane sheepishly, and uh, you know the plane was the flight was delayed and everything. Oh. So uh, yeah, that was an experience. I get to I get to Manchester, and my ride, the guy who came to pick me up, wasn't there no, because of, of the delay of the flight. He was back on his way up to Carlisle. Yeah. They oh, got man. in contact with them somehow. Get back and yeah, they picked me up and I was I was tired as and you know so what finally, a start. Got to Carlisle, what a start. finally got to Carlisle yeah. and then uh, yeah met uh, met some good people there. Oh, that's amazing. 
So like you said, you're struggling. Well, you don't necessarily struggle with the cold now, but was it like like a really harsh change of environment when you first got there? The, it, well, it was September. It was a week. Before, you know, oh, I was only eighteen. Summer, isn't it? It was. It was a week before my nineteenth birthday, so it was. It was still pretty warm uh, when I got there. So I was still in shorts and jandals, but you know, people <laughs> were still <laughs> looking at us weird because they were all wrapped up. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was it was an experience. Oh, that's amazing. So, what were the people and the fans like? Did they embrace you, or and did you embrace them? Like, was it because it's a completely different culture shock? I imagine going over there. It was a different culture shock. You know, it was so many people when they talk to you, and it's like I couldn't understand because they were all different accents, yeah. and I had to try and tell them to, oh, can you speak slower because I, I can't understand you. <laughs> and um, yeah, so because the club was newly developed, um, we had to, well, we were allowed um, five overseas players okay. in the first team and five in the second team. Cool. But uh, that didn't come later until Cameron had come over to coach later on in that year. But the fans, yeah, they were um, very uh, vocal, and very passionate. And yeah. like Carlisle's more of a, a football city. So yeah. the rugby league was still new. So the crowds that we did get in, you know, they really did enjoy seeing rugby league for the first time, you know, sort of thing. And and uh, really enjoyed, um, enjoyed the entertaining games. Oh, that's awesome, man. Like, did you have much success uh, while you were there? Well, I didn't win anything. <laughs> <laughs> didn't win anything, but uh, got to meet some... Uh, some celebrities in that while they were over here, while I was over yeah. here. Uh, there was one game we went to uh, down to play Fulham. It was at Crystal Palace football ground. Right. We're, you know, we were playing uh, after the game, you know, shower and that, and we come back into the bar. And there was someone, there was all these uh, all these girls around some around this person. Yeah. And I went and asked my mate, uh, Steve Briley. I said, oh, who's Steve Briley? Uh, the beast, we call him. Great player. He said, who's that over there? And he went, oh, that's uh, Vinnie Jones. Oh, and I was like, that was just after, you know, the picture where he's was squeezing Gaz's, Gaz's balls, you know. And I went, oh, yeah, this is there. And so I, I give him my pint. He said, yeah, what's this? So I sort of went through the part of the crowd. And yeah. Vinnie was just standing you know, looking at me. And I, I just put my hand out. And I uh, says, oh, nice to meet you, Vinnie. And he said, you're all right, mate. And, all yeah. and then... I went back and my, my mate was just turning. I was going, yeah. no, what did you just do? I said, well, you know, later in life, I can tell my kids I've met Vinnie Jones. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was an experience. And the other time was we played uh, at Sheffield. Yeah. And the world uh, strongmen, uh, Jamie Reeves, and uh, I think it was John Paul Sigmundson. They all were at the game. They were together at the game and, Apparently, they'll try to uh, promote them as coming to play for Sheffield. Okay. And uh, so I've seen them after the game, and they were sitting there, and I just went over to say hi and that, and I was just look at the size of them. I was thinking, can I take down these two, these guys? They won't be able to run far, you know. <laughs> Their stamina won't be that good, but, you know. But it was all just a gimmick. and uh, But, you know, it, yeah, I enjoyed it. Oh, that's awesome. So speaking of good people, uh, you'll you'll know this fellow, Stephen Thompson. He wanted to tell you that you're an amazing player and that Ray Edgar from Carlisle was wanting to know what is your favourite highlight from your time playing for the Carlisle Border Raiders? Well, Stephen Edgar, you know, they're great people. Um, my favourite time at, at Carlisle was uh, meeting other Kiwis that we played against, going to different parts of the country to play. and. Um, but yeah, I miss you know, miss all the Kiwi boys that we had at Carlisle, and because we used to all stick together and have a hangi and everything, and oh man, you know, it's um, yeah, that, that were the good times, really good times. Yeah, oh nice man. So you came back home in 1994. And you played a year with Counties Manuko, uh, captaining them in the Lion Red Cup. Um, how did the season go? And did you enjoy being captain? I did enjoy being captain. I, you know, it was something new to me. Yeah. Um, I don't think I had to uh, do much, really, because all the boys, Stan Martin, our coach, 
he had got the team, you know, bonded right from the start, you know, preseason, and then everybody, yep. everybody enjoyed each other's company, and you know, we're really good friends. And so, with me being captain, I think it was just, you know, just being positive with the boys, and you know, if they needed a lift, just trying to um, give them that. But yep. uh, yeah, we finished, we finished um, minor premiers. Yeah. That year and you know, we were going really good and then unfortunately we got to that final and you know, things happened on finals day. Anyone can win uh on the yeah. day. And North Harbor, yeah, they uh they beat us, I think it was twenty four or sixteen or something like that. Ouch, ouch. So, and did you like dominate just, uh quite hard all season? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. 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 We you know, we'd beat we'd beaten everyone and I don't think we lost many. But uh, you know, then we come up against those Canterbury boys, and you know, yeah, crash, <laughs> crash their city shiners, and you know, it's uh, you know, they're a good bunch of blokes as well. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, that was uh, that was an experience. It was disappointing, but uh, you know, really enjoyed it. Yeah, you would have come up against my buddies Mark Nixon and Aaron Whitaker for sure with the Cardinals. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. They're good blokes yeah. as well, you know. Yeah, man. Just real, real characters. Uh, real characters. Yeah, no, they're hard case. I've got to meet them both. They're they're unreal, eh? <laughs> they're so good. Oh, good stuff, man. So in '94, let's talk about going to Papua New Guinea. You're selected for the Kiwis to make your test debut. Am I right on that? And um, yeah, 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 yeah. How good did that feel, man? Reading your hearing what your else? name read out to make your debut and go to Papua well, New Guinea. That that team was named after that final, after okay. the um, Lion Raid Cup final. So I was, I think I was back in the changing room and someone said, oh, you, you've you uh, made the Kiwi sort of thing. And, you know, and my right side to go back out. And I think I had a had an interview out there. But that sort of, you know, it was, it was a proud moment. Um, to sort of soften the blow of losing the final. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I was just uh, looking forward to you know, playing for New Zealand. That was that has always been the dream since I was a young lad. Nice. And so ever since watching those in 1983, that Kiwi team that beat Australia. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 1912. And they had, you know, because I was watching Manukau boys, you know, Nicky Wright. Yeah. It was Dean yeah. Bell and uh, Ian Bell. Yeah. And uh, I always remember the time when Nicky Wright uh, chased down Mal Meninga down that sideline and you know, got him yes. into touch and Meninga came yep. up with a blood, blood nose and everything. And, and that was sort of what inspired us to, you know, I want to play for these, you know, New Zealand and represent. Amazing. So it must have been such an amazing moment to realise your dream's about to be realised. All that hard work, you know, uh, training in the car park, you know, as a young fella, being the whole team, you know, you know, really paid yeah. off in that moment. Oh, for sure. For sure. Really, you know, really chuffed and it was just uh, a good, you know, great experience, really, because playing for the, uh, the top boys that are, you know, coming over from Australia, all different parts of the world, just to link up, and then we go on our, our tour. Yeah, man. All right, so let's dive into it. Papua New Guinea, you know, I love the Papua New Guinea stories. Everyone's got a good one. What, what are some of the memories that stand out for you? Well, there's uh, good memories. We, we went to... Um, the New Zealand consulate. We had to we got into all our it like it's really hot over there. And we had to wear our number ones and you know go and okay. meet and meet everyone, uh, have something to eat and all this and that. And then when we were leaving, um because we were I think we were going to a football, there was a football game on. So everyone's getting on the bus and we were, we come out and we've seen the security with they one in this Jeep with these machine guns. <laughs> and uh, so we started talking to them, and uh, I think it was Terry Hermanson who got in and started. You know, he was gonna he drove the jeep, and I think it was me and Johnny Lomax. Me and Johnny Lomax got on the back with the machine guns, and oh. like there, there was loads. Well, the uh, the guys that <laughs> the security that were they they'd been on the drink for a long time. So all the bottles, empty bottles of beer and all that in the in the back of the jeep. So. Says, oh, well, we asked for permission if we could go. And uh, I think Frank Endicott said, Yeah, you can go. So 
and sort of put the sirens on on our way to the stand, you know, escorting uh, all the boys on the bus. And then, yeah, Good straight way. into the stadium. So we're there with the machine guns on the back and I wish I had a picture because that was that was a, that would have been a sight to see then. That was nuts. So, uh, that was actually also, nuts. <laughs> yeah, on the, we used to have a, you know, a day off. So some of us, you know, well, Tony Tatupu and us were like, what are we going to do? So we sort of stayed at the hotel, had a little swim. But then yep. we went into uh, into town sort of looking for artifacts, you know, to buy, you know, just having a look about. When the other, I think the other boys went to play golf. And when they come back, they said, man, we had a, uh, we had a caddy. We all had caddies. And they yeah. all had bow and arrows. Because, <laughs> you know, for security, you know, yeah. any, anyone on the course, right? yeah. So it was just, you know, crazy. You know, we were just, yeah, wow. <laughs> your caddies. <laughs> yeah. That's no, awesome. That was, uh, yeah, that was, she's, that was good. She's a different place, isn't she? <laughs> different place. You know, they, uh, they, they love their league. You know, it's, it's their national sport. Yeah. Um, you know, they just want to want to meet you, want to touch you and that. But, you know, when they tap you on the back, it's like a, a, a hard thud, eh? <laughs> you know, they, What's they, it like oh, running out you know, onto the field with a crowd, like with people hanging out of trees and on rooftops and it's just chaos? What's oh, it like? Well, that was, uh, that's an experience, you know. They, a lot of them walk, you know, have walked for a day, two days just to get to watch the game. That's wow. how passionate they are about their league, you know, just to just to see their heroes sort of play and uh, you know, yeah. to see a good game of good game of rugby. So, you know, it's <laughs> awesome. awesome. Yeah. So good. Okay, so you um also played for the New Zealand Sevens team in the nineteen ninety five preseason tournament. What was that experience like playing the shorter version of the game? Is that like balls to the wall pretty hard out? Yeah, well, you know. It was preseason. We're you know pretty fit. Um, the Warriors had already, we were all you know at the Warriors and the Warriors had already picked their their team, their okay. team to take to to Australia. So none of us were in it. Like, but we got selected to play for New Zealand. The okay. same, and uh, we were in the same pool as the Warriors. Oh, really? <laughs> we were there. So we, you know, we played them and we actually beat them. Okay. And um, so we got we got all the way to well we got to the quarterfinals. Okay. Uh, where we we were played against Fiji and and uh, you know we I was injured I injured my ankle in that uh, the game before but we lost against Fiji but it was an experience just uh, watching the sevens and you know playing it is so fast it was so fast yeah. the uh, tempo. Yeah. yeah. So. Did um Fiji play manly in that final off the top of my head? I, 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 I don't I can't remember. I can't oh, remember. It's been forever since I remember watching any highlights of that. But I think the Warriors, did they have yourself? I think the Western Reds were in your pool as well. I think. Probably, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I'm not been ages. You no, know, it's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet as man. So uh Scott rushton has got another great question, which is during the nineteen ninety four season, at what point did you think you could play Winfield Cup? And were there any other clubs other than the Warriors interested in signing you? Uh, I don't, I don't know if there was any other clubs, um, but I actually signed for the Warriors in '93. Oh, really? Yeah, because okay. you know they, they were building up to put the team in, and and so you know if we go back to the '92 when um, the Pacific Cup, you know I've been playing. I've been playing non-stop with going back back and forth to England for three and a half years non-stop. So I decided to to have a have a rest, you know, have a summer for yeah. for the first time in a long time. And uh nice. I remember I was at a Point Chev um prize giving and someone had said to me, Oh, you used to be a good player. And that sort of I was like Really? You know, I was like, Wow, wow, you know, I'd put weight on them, you know, going to England and that and Okay. So that sort of stuck in my head. So I knew the Warriors, you know, were trying to recruit and that. So pre-season, 93 pre-season, I ended up shedding 17 kilos. Wow. And I and I, I started playing my best best rugby, you know, playing hooker. Damn. And that's impressive. And uh yeah, we had a we had a game against um 
Mount Albert at home. And uh, I heard that John Money and uh, was coming down to the game to watch my cousin, uh, Tony okay. Dekubu. Oh, so wow. I was like, wow. So I was like, well, if I have a, a good game here, I might. Uh... Well, I heard that Sid Iru had gone on walkabout. They couldn't find where he was. Oh, really? So I thought, well, they might need another another hooker. So I had a I had a really good game, and you know, man of the match in that, and they ended up. Uh, I got approached by, you know, Laurie Laurie Stubbing, who was the manager. Okay. At the time, and they said they wanted to sign us. So I was like, well, you know, you know, the Lord. <laughs> that was that. To play reserve group, nice. you know? So you were originally part of that top, say, 34 or 25, I think it was back then, for the Warriors. Is that correct? I wasn't. No, I was signed as a reserve hooker. Okay. So back then, we, we all trained together. The academy, the reserve grade, and the first team. So there's about, about 50 of us, maybe, I'd say. We all, you know, trained, did all, yep. all the preseason, all the hard work. And... uh my contract was only, I think, reserve grade was about fifteen, fifteen thousand okay. at the time. Yeah, and I suppose you uh, did. You all like sort of hold down jobs as well, still in that era. Oh yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was cleaning. I was car car detail. Okay. So you know, that's what I was. I was doing detailing cars and then uh, yeah, playing a bit of rugby. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, so. So you're in with all these, uh, you're at the first squad, you got reserve grade, uh, you're all training together. What's it like? Like, this is a, a question I've just been dying to ask you. What's it like being a part of the buzz of the the very first Warriors side, uh, that the nation's really getting behind it, especially, you know, Auckland in particular. You know, there must have been a hell of a buzz and all that build up, the TV adverts, you know, all the marketing. What's it like as a player being amongst all of that? It was you know, quite an experience. It was it was exciting. It was you know, we knew we were going into the Australian competition. Um, we did a lot of a lot of promotion work. Like we used to fly to like Otago, stop yeah. off there, you know, do a bit of a greet and meet and greet, and then back on the plane, and then we'll go down to Invercargill, and then you know, ah, right. just pro promoting the the team and the game, and uh, yeah, it was just. Excitement! Everybody just wanted to see, you know, this yeah. team, this team play because you know they were all, you know, people are also fans of different clubs like Broncos, you know, and all that. Yeah. And these teams were going to come to New Zealand, and that's so there's big excitement around it, and I think the whole country got around around the club to support. Yeah. Just quietly, I was a Broncos fan before the Warriors come along. Just quietly. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's from Brisbane. you got to forgive me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what's it like having John Money pulling all these players together? You know, you've got a complete blank canvas to work with. You've got no team style as such because you haven't played a top grade match yet. What's it like you know, for the coach and yourself, you know, working in that environment? Well, no. John had a a hard uh, a hard task of picking you know picking a squad out of that many players, and you know he, he did come with uh, credibility you know with Parramatta and and Wigan you know winning Absolutely. winning cups and that, so you know it would have been a hard job for him um, I'm sure and you know he had the other staff around him to help him out and. Uh, you know, I think everybody just wanted to do their best, and yeah. um, you know, try and make try and make that uh, that team that that first team yeah. that uh, that ran out. Maybe you've noticed this is uh, this 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 top here is my my top from the first game. Oh, and, mate, uh, that's amazing! It's, it's it's been in the been in the attic for twenty nine years, so it's the first time that I brought it down just to just to share with you. So. That's, that's unreal, man. I'm like privileged. <laughs> that's so cool. That is just so cool. Oh, loving it. Um, so so you were in the reserve squad, but you got converted into a prop and then elevated into that first match. So I won't talk about the first match yet. How did you go from hook at a prop? Where did that happen? Well, that when we were at, on the at the uh, World Sevens, it was, I think it was Bob Lanigan that, that come to me and our trainer, and he, he said, "Oh." I think John wants to play you, play you in the fours because Andy Platt was injured. 
Okay. So I think he wants he wants to use you as a prop. I was like, all right, I've never played prop before, but you know, I'll give it a go. If, you know, so we had all these. See, I, I can't remember which order it was because we played Canterbury in one of the trail games, and I yeah. was in the I was in the sec I was in the second row. Okay. In that trial game. And then that was down in Addington, you know, had, wasn't like, it? That was Addington. There was a big crowd yep. down there. And Massive. Very vocal, very vocal crowd. And it was uh, you know, it was a great atmosphere. And uh um there was also the preseason um tournament. I think we played North Sydney. Okay. And I'd I'd done my ankle again in that game. Oh, so no. that was, you know, I had to get that right before the uh for the Warriors uh first match. Yep. So yeah, it was all um it was all go. It was all go. Um Man. So um when did you find out you were gonna be starting prop for the first Warriors match? Like that's a pretty crazy moment. Like when did yeah, you find out? Well John John had picked this team the week before. We had this okay. you know we had the meeting and that and he picked the squad. And then we had this uh, like a black tie dinner okay. a, week, a week before, um, where they would, would introduce all of us uh, to to the public, sort of well, everyone that was there. Okay. And uh, like we were eating upstairs, we had our dinner upstairs, and um, Ruby Turner, well, she was, I think she was the entertainment, the, uh, the soul singer. Yeah. And she come up, she come up to say hello and everything, and oh, you know. Ruby okay. Turner, too. awesome. And then we went down. Um, we all went out Indian file onto the stage, and then I was I was last. I was last in the line, so they all sort of dispersed up that way, and I ended up where the lady was uh, talking on the microphone. I was like, I hope she didn't. <laughs> hope she don't talk Whoops. to me. <laughs> and then she did. She asked me a question. Uh, I think it was about what, why do you run like you do, or something. Okay. I said, hey, just just the way I am, sort of thing, you know. Yeah. So that was uh, that was our first team. Um, so we prepared. We started to prepare really well. Um, yeah, it was leading up to the leading up to that day. Yeah, man. I was just it was well, just relaxed. You know, you get the newspaper out and see what sort of team the Broncos were putting out, and I was. Oh, that's a that's a stack. That team is stacked. Pretty handy, yeah, eh? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> and so we had to get down to the stadium. I think it was two, two or three hours before before the um, before the kickoff. And that already had like you know they had the academy game on, then the reserves, and then it was hours later on. So we could, yep. we could you know driving past, we could see all the crowd. Sort of flowing in, uh, yeah, into the stadium, and we get to the stadium, and then it's like you know, totally chilled out, you know, just relaxed a bit. We had a um, a team meeting, and then John put on this motivational video, which was okay. um, American football. Uh, so Vince Lombardi, yeah, he uh, there was a video, you know, that he put on, he put that on for to motivate us. So we're all sitting there, you know, watching this. And then we had a bit of a bit of a talk, and then we went down and started getting strapped, strapped down, you know, in the gym. And then, uh, yeah, they, it was nearly that time to go out, and we um, slowly walked over to the number two ground yeah. to do our our warm up, and you know, everything's going off in in the stadium, you know, um, yeah. entertainment and all that. And that was so loud, so we were all trying to. Try to warm up, you know, and pass the ball yeah. to each other, and you know, to all go through all our uh, our warm ups and that, and then, yeah, that was it was crazy. Although, and then we, you know, we're gonna have to go through that tunnel. Yeah, man, tell me about that. What's uh, it like? You've got this thirty thousand screaming fans there. You're in the dark tunnel. There's flames everywhere. There's drums going off. Like, what's that moment like? That has to be amazing, right? Oh yeah, you know, they all got us to says right, you know, because there's a lot of people involved. Both ends of the tunnel, you know, they're on there uh, talking to each other, right? It's time to bring them through and all this. So, you know, we had to get lined up, line up behind yep. each other and then start the long walk 
down the tunnel and, and as we were getting closer and closer, you know, you can see uh, the roar and, and then we see the flames, the flames yeah. going up and then the, Ma the Maori haka. And yeah. then, wow, you know, closer and closer. And then as you got to the, the end of the, the tunnel to come out, you sort of see all the people in the in the distance. Did you, uh, you know, yeah. understand and that? Yeah. You know, they all look like sardines all packed together. <laughs> and uh, and then the lady says, right, let's go out. And then, so I think I was about fifth fifth out okay. in, the, on the, in the line. And I was just, you know, I was just looking down at the ground because I didn't want to trip over any, any cables or anything else, but, you know, until we got to the field. And then, you know, they have a sprint oh, off, and, you know, and just loosen up and then... Uh, and it was it was so loud the cloud uh, the crowd you know was, they were just chanting and chanting and I couldn't hear like ten meters away the next person oh, really? you know like, what you know can't hear you amazing and uh, yeah so come around to the kickoff and um, where I'm set on the field I'm actually I'm actually standing on the Warriors logo yeah so, oh, cool. uh, yeah was... all right I'm, I'm here you know so uh, oh, good. yeah that was. That was so. That was fantastic. It was, you know, some these all the fans in that, that that came to the game or you know were watching. I'd say they would. If you put the question up, where were you when? Yeah, the Warriors played the Broncos. They, I'd say they could tell you. Well, I was, I was in a pub down, you know, for my friend. I was watching yeah. from home, and yeah. it was people. I was at the game. And wow, it was something that I'll never forget. And it's something you know I'll never forget as well. Oh, mate, it's, it's a part of New Zealand sporting history. Like, it's just like, like the whole, like, finally to have a team to call our own in the Australian Cup, you know, it's pretty massive. Yeah. And it's a massive stepping stone for Kiwi League players, you know, to make the Kiwis. And that's awesome, mate. It's just another pathway which yeah. is quite attainable. Yeah. Beautiful. Sure. <laughs> so, um, so what are your memories from that first game? Because you guys almost had them beat, you know, Tia Ropari, he scored that try. You guys had a pretty handy lead. And then bloody Alan yeah. Lee stole the show. Uh, yeah. That, uh, I think that Tia's try was about, um, I think it was about 25 still to play after yeah. that. When, you know, I give him the pass, but I think I could have scored myself because, you know, when I look back in the video, I was like, I could have, but I, Fetty, Fetty come on my blind side, you know, he overran and sort yeah. of put me off sort of thing. And I don't want to run behind him. And, you know, so, so, uh, I, that could have been my first try, but yeah, I give, give the tear and yeah, it was, um, yeah, but we never, you know, 25 minutes to go. And you think, you know, we're up, uh, was it 22, 10 or something like that? I can't remember, but, um, you know, I've always been told ever since we, we were younger that, you play till the, the final whistle. Yeah. You know, so we couldn't really say it was game over. You know, you just got to no. keep going and going. And uh, then up, up popped that uh, Alan Langer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the, legend, oh. the legend that he is. Yeah, he is. What a player he is. What a player. It's unreal. It, it gets me every time I watch the highlights of that game. I go, oh. You guys had it. <laughs> it's just, oh, yeah. It just grates yeah. me every time. But, uh, you know, my favourite try, one of my favourite tries of all time is the Warriors' very first try for, for Phil Blake. Uh, you know, Fetty Taiwa made the mean break down the side. And a beautiful yeah, yeah. ball back into Phil Blake. Like, what a try to open the Warriors' campaign, you know, in the top flight. It's an amazing try. Yeah, the, well, Blake, he's, he's a prolific try scorer. You know, he's, yeah. he, um, the crowd just went mental. After that, and because you know, we're I think we were 10 0 down at the time, so yeah, it was uh, you know, it was it was much needed, you know, just to give us yes. that you know, bit of uh, bit of um, so I sort of bit more oomph, you know, we can yeah. you know, we can actually score against these guys, so yeah, uh, yeah, Lakey, he's uh, so fast, great try, wasn't it? Then Sean Hoppy got one on the other side. And then Tatupu went over for one, just yeah, bumped off whoever yeah. was tackling him and went he just, over. He just, yeah. yeah, Tony just shrugged, you know, yes. shrugged them off Get as if he was, wasn't there. Yeah. And so that sort of, uh, 
you know, the boys' confidence was starting to build and, um, you know, the crowd were getting even louder. And, um, yeah, it was, you know, we just had to keep keep praying. Yeah, man. What a game. Oh, it's great to talk about. So uh, the Warriors fans loved your running off the back fence style of play. Uh, was that something you always prided yourself on, like the way you just selflessly charged into the opposition defensive line? Oh, of course. You know, I love yeah. it hitting the ball at pace and you know I didn't I didn't really care who was in front uh, okay. you know I didn't I didn't see big name players or anything like that I just saw okay. I just saw them as a yeah. uh, as a person or as a body and yeah. I you know whatever size you are you know I'll run I just run at you so uh, I used to you know when we do team team trainings you know teamwork before the matches I, I would still run Hundred percent to take the ball yeah. when you're only meant to be jogging and taking, you know. So it was just instilled in me just to just to do it and you know just to try and get forward for the team and um, you know help them out. Yeah. So Troy Warner uh, from the Paracay podcast. Shout out to you, Troy. He wants uh, to know if there was ever any fear at any stage when you ran the ball up the way you did, like without any sidestep, just straight. And, any fear? No fear. None at all. No. Didn't Not fear anyone, no. The only person I feared was my parents. The only people were <laughs> pretty much, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was it, yeah. Awesome, man. So where did the nickname The Rhino come from? Where's that come from, man? That's the first I've heard of it, you know. Really? <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> I don't know. But people, you know, people give you nicknames for the way you play, so Rhino was probably okay. just one of them. Uh, that makes sense. I had, uh, you know, with the Warriors, I had the nickname the Hitman. Okay. And then, you know, just or Nitro, or uh, you know, when I went over to England, I went to Hull, and they called me the Man Eater. I was like, nice. When they get these names from, you know, it's just it's sure. crazy. Oh, it's great. You know. <laughs> so, so, what's it like uh, playing alongside the likes of like Greg Alexander? Like, what an amazing signing! You know, he came over, you know, during a real tough time for him when his brother sadly passed away. Um, but what a great pickup for the Warriors. Um, what's it like having a guy like him steering the team around? Yeah, he's, you know, he came, he came with uh, so much experience, yeah. you know, um, playing, uh, you know, professionally. And he um, he was great off the field, you know. He was one of the boys, you know, he'd joke about and everything. And, you yeah. know, he always helped you... Uh, you know, like if we we're training and that, and you know we we're struggling preseason and that. You know, he was more the experienced one to like him and Phil Blake or Dean Bell. You know, yeah. to sort of pick you up and say, "Come on, boys! You know, we can. You know, keep going, keep going, keep keep working hard, keep training." And you know, so their experience sort of rubbed off, rubbed off on everyone, and uh, you know, helped us. You know, through a lot of training when we were struggling. Awesome, man. Um, so you guys had a pretty decent season. You just missed the finals thanks to, we'll say, Joe Wagner. <laughs> but the, the whole interchange. Yeah, Joey's fault. Up. Lost you guys. Joey's fault. <laughs> That's unbelievable, yeah. man. Lost you guys a playoff spot. But um, apart from that, what were some of your highlights? Because you, you got a pretty good try against the Sharks when you got a pretty handy win against a very good Cronulla team. Yeah, that was uh, a... <laughs> that was a... Uh, I got a story about that. So, um, yeah, before that, uh, before that try, I'd got a, uh, I'd had, I got a knock, like okay. I said, about five minutes before, and uh, our trainer, well, Anthony, he uh, he ran the water on, and he was like, "Oh, you're right, you're right, and all this." And I, I, I turned to him, I said, "Excuse my language, who the fuck are you?" <laughs> sort of thing. You know, I knew who he was, but after that knock, I was sort of. Uh, you know, I was sort of day sort of thing. So a bit of magic water and that. And then I scored that try. And then um, when I look back at that, you know, a big smile on my face and all this. But uh, we got back into the changing room. And I was, I think Gene, I was sitting next to Gene Namu. And I actually yeah. asked him, did I, did I score? <laughs> you know, and he like looked at me, you know, what? Yeah. You know, because I, like, I couldn't, I wasn't sure, you know, so. Oh, far out. That hit, <laughs> so my first try that I couldn't remember, you know, but 
it's, it's on video. So right, it's on video. We know you did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Did you have any favorite victories? Because you guys, um, you gave some pretty big wins in the end. Like, I think you gave Parramatta a bit of a hiding and you gave West some massive hiding when uh, you lost those points. But yeah, there was a few big wins there. Yeah. I think uh, anyone is uh, yeah, true. You know, anyone is a favorite one. But yeah. apart from that, um, the Cronulla one that yeah. we just talked about, um, I think the Illawarra when we played them at home. Because yep. uh, we lost to them away. You did. You got, got hiding it, too. It, it was a it was a high scoring game, yeah. And um, yeah, actually, jo John Money had said to us, well, a few of us before that before that game to get up and uh, I think it's Darren Fritz get up yeah. in his face because he'll yeah. he'll run all day and he, he's a big lad and that. Yeah. And we didn't do that. We let him run okay. and, and he you know he scored a try, he assisted. Assisted some tries and they had a big game. So this game yep. uh, we played at home. I think every time he touched the ball, there was about three or four of us <laughs> onto him. You know, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, we we won that game. So that that's another that's a favorite one of uh, nice also, man, nice. Also, miss, you know, playing against Penrith, my second try. Yeah, the second and final try. That was uh, yeah, one for me to remember as well. Awesome, man. Awesome. So. Um... So you actually played another three test matches for the Kiwis during that year, 95 World Cup, scoring a try, uh, the 25-24 win over Tonga. So do you remember much of the try in the game? Like, that's pretty close, man. One point win. Oh, yeah, we were down, uh, I think it was 22-10 with 10 minutes to go or something like that. Well, I was having a, yeah. I was having a rest out in the back lane. And, <laughs> the ball, and then I see the ball coming out. I was like, oh, no. I was trying to you know, catch my breath with that, and then you know, I right, I gotta, you know, gotta get in yeah. this line. And then Richie, Richie, gave me the ball, and I just just yeah. went for the line. I was yeah, naked, so. like, you know, I got there in the end, and then that sort of Richie kicked it from the sideline, and then that sort of, uh, you know, get back for the kickoff, and then we scored again, and then, yeah, you know, and then. Time was ticking down and that, and then I think Richie kicked the penalty and we were 24-24. And I think with the last play, last play before, you know, it was going to blow the blow the hooter, Richie drop kicked it off his, off his bad foot. Really? Yeah, and, and off his left foot. So if we had lost, we, we were going home. Yeah. That was massive. You know, only because yeah. there was only, there was only like 10 teams over there and the pool yeah. that Australia were in with the Great Britain side, there was four teams in there. And then the other two pools there was only three. Okay. So so um yeah, we were lucky to win our pool. Wales yeah. they they finished above Samoa in the, the other pool. Okay. And because Great Britain had beaten Australia in the first game, they finished top. So oh, that's well. how we got that's how we got to play Australia in the oh. in the semi final. <laughs> Don't you hate that? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, and Great Britain got Wales. <laughs> oh, too easy. Yeah, too Straight easy. through to the final. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome, man. Oh, how good was Reggie though? Like, I don't know. People might put a bit of a mock on him, but I don't know why because his goal kicking and like in general, unbelievable play. And he was red hot in the mid mid nineties. He was unreal. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, Reggie is a character. Real funny, you know, Carrie used to walk with the Warriors, he used to walk around with no shirt on and just have his abs flexing, you know, tensing his abs, walking about. <laughs> and a big smile on his face. He was like, <laughs> go on, oh, put a shirt hilarious. on, man. Yeah. Oh, mate, those days of uh, him and Mark Ellis on TV, I used to live for that every week, watching the show those two were on. They were, they were lunatics, I loved it. Yeah, funny, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, okay, Super League. Super League rolls around. Uh, sort of around the mid nineties. Uh, how did it affect you personally? So it was like ninety five, ninety six, and clubs are trying to sign players left, right, and centre to Super League. How did that all work yeah. out for you, man? Well, for a lot of us, it was the first time playing in the Winfield Cup, so we were like, you know, we we're novices really. Um, but uh, when the Super League came around, we, you know, we just the club went to Super League. So 
we were just the quiet ones in the back, you know, we just went with, with everyone, you know, they made the decision. So we just went with it. Um, you know, there's a lot of money thrown around then. And oh, yeah. I think it was after, after our game against North Sydney, we, uh, we flew home and the next day we had to meet up and, uh, yeah, we all met up at John John Money's house and individually one, you know, went into the room at a time yeah. and then they come out with a smile on their face and <laughs> like, oh, all right. So I went in and, you know, my wife, uh, girlfriend at the time, she says, when she dropped me off, she says, don't sign anything. She says, all right, I went. And then I went in the room and I saw the, I saw the contract and I was like, and the sign on for you. Like, give me the pen. Give you me know, the so pen. I, then, yeah, give me the pen. So I went from uh, like the 15 grand reserve grade contract to a six figure sum, six figure salary. Not bad. And I, yeah. And I was like, wow, you know, and it was, it was a four year, four year contract. So really? Uh, wow. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we just wanted to play, play league, but, you know, we'll play for free. But the money that was thrown about was ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah. question. Because I've heard players were like signed to Super League, but they were told to go to certain clubs. They didn't get a choice. Well, they'd have preferences. Whereas a lot of the Warriors players all went to the Warriors. So, was it, if you were already with a club that was aligned with Super League, you went with that club? Is that how yeah. it worked? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. So, you did sign on with the Warriors. So, four year deal. But uh, over 96 and 97 seasons, you only got the four games with the Warriors yeah. in 96 and one in yeah. Super League. So what's going on there? Why why were you not getting so much match time? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, pre-season, 96 pre in 96 in the pre-season. I remember after training, I went I went and sat in the changing room and uh, and John, John Money had come in. So it was just us two in there and he says, oh, he says, you haven't made my 23, 23 or 24. I said, oh, I said, all right. And he said, uh, but uh, you can, I'll give my, a friend of mine, uh, Peter Mulholland. Uh, oh, yes. You know, he was uh, at Paris Saint-Germain. So I said, all right. I said, well, I said, I'll, you know, I'll think about it. You know, I'll go, I'll go home and uh, have a talk with the wife and all that. And then. It came on the on the six o'clock news that 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 day that I had, I was still in the squad. Okay. And I was like, "Well," so I went went back to training the next the next day. And uh, as you walk into the gym, John's offices, you know, glass uh, windows, you can see him. And he waved us in, and yeah. then uh, yeah. he said, "Oh, yeah, you're back. You're back in my uh, 23. That's okay. And I, oh, that was. Yeah, that was it, and, and then that's it. Didn't say why, nothing. That was it. Well, um, I think uh, Phil Blake and all of them were in his office at the time, so okay. you know they were having a chat, and then when he called us, he just he just said, "You're back in my 23," and that was that. Okay. Uh, months, you know, months down the line, and you know, I'm playing reserve grade and that, and yeah, you know, I didn't mind that because you know you you're, you're trying to help help the boys in the reserve team, you know, and that so. You just yeah. carry on and do your best. And uh, I got a phone call from uh, Jack, uh, well, at my house, uh, from Jack Robinson at Wigan. And uh, he, had, he had said, oh, I heard you uh, had a fallout with uh, with Moni. I said, yeah. uh, oh, all right. And he said, would like you to come over and play for us for on a two-year deal. Okay. I said, oh, all right. I said, all right, I'll... I have to think about it, you know, and just do. And uh, I went back to the club, and yep. then, you know, they persuaded me to stay. Okay. And uh, so I stayed. Uh, you know, wife was pregnant, so you know, I wanted daughter to be brought up in New Zealand. So, okay. um, yeah, so I stayed with the Warriors, and then, uh, you know, limited time in first team, but you know, we still, uh, I still had to give my all to the reserve grade, and you know, we we got to a final. Yeah, first final, you know, for, for a club. So, you know, you just you just gotta keep going, you know. Just yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, you guys had a great season. Going down by two yeah. points in the the reserve grade final, 
Uh, mate, yeah, man, what was... an experience in itself, being in the first ever Warriors final of any grade. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. We had a, you know, we had a good team as well, you know, a lot of young players coming through uh, with experience, you know, boys as well, the Chief, you know, Tony Tumavave, uh, yeah. Tony Tutupu and that. Nigel Wangana, you know, what a player. Yeah, what a so, that, so that game was, you know, it started off, it was really hot. And then, um, you know, I think they were leading 6-0 at halftime. Yeah. And, um, you know, then second half, Woods, I think Woods scored. He did. I think. He, he did indeed. Went 6-0 six, six and then all of a sudden the weather, weather just changed and the rain started coming down and all the bad, you know, the wind was swirling and everything. And I think we got a, a try disallowed. Uh, I think Doc Murray had scored and uh, that linesman had, the linesman come on and said, nah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, uh, that's a bit of a sore point for you boys. Oh, no, that's, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, dear. You know, so we lost, we lost that game. Two points, yeah, but, you know, I think these guys had finished the uh, minor premiers anyway, so. Yeah, they were up they there. Were, you know. Yeah, man. So, uh, by all accounts, uh, you're a bit of a gentle giant off the field, but apparently there's a story about you chasing a few teammates out of your house with a spear early one morning, and I want to hear all about it. <laughs> oh, well, that's a long time ago, and I, I was, it, it's, you know, you know, the lads come around for, for a drink. I think we'd just come back uh, from Australia, so we had some duty-free, and, and I always thought, uh, you know, had a few drinks and that, and then I think they... By the end of the night, I think they just didn't want to go home. So I had my uh, artifacts on the from Papua New Guinea, the bow and arrow right. and stuff. And so I just grabbed that as a joke. You know? yeah. And they ran out the house. And I don't know how they got home because you know, it, was, it was early in the morning. So. Oh, that's cold. It was only, Love it. Yeah, a bit of fun. Oh, nice, man. So um, you ended up signing with Hull for the 1998 season because, yeah, like you said, you only got the one game in 97 during Super League. Um, so was that like the catalyst to moving on, like just not getting that first grade time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, an opportunity come to go to Hull. Well, uh, Salford were, you know, were looking for us as well. But I think, uh, yeah, I did want want to move on. And uh, well, at Hull they had uh, like Brad Heppy and Jason Timu and uh, ah, Canterbury boy Maya David. Yeah, man, he was there. Yeah, so. Yeah. I thought, uh, you know, if I'm going to go, I'll, you know, I'll go uh, to a team where, you know, I know some of the boys and, you know, they'll nice. you know, help us out. So, yeah, that's where that's where I went. Um, nice, man. So, was it nice uh, to be back in the UK? It was. You know, it's uh, back to the cold weather again. But, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, you know, it was good to see uh, family as well because my family are all from Carlisle, so. You know, it was, it was good for her and it was good for all of us to, you know, see them again. And, um, yeah, so that was that was me for 98. Uh, yeah, how'd the season yeah, go? Played. Was there much success? We, we started off well. And uh, sort of halfway through the season, we sort of just started to lose games. And then I don't remember where we finished in the league, but, you know, uh, I only had a one-year contract there, so... Um, yeah, I played. I think I played nearly all the games except uh, when I got injured against Lee uh, Leeds. Yeah, was, I think uh, I missed I missed one game. But uh, anyway, after after Hull, you know, there was four of us. There was uh, Brad Meyer and a South African uh, Mark Johnson. Okay, uh, we got together and then we we tried to go to rugby union. You know, try to sell us. Really? Try to sell all four, you know, try to get all four of us as a, a package deal. So we oh, went sure. down to uh we went down to Bridge End in Wales. Okay. And uh you now we went into you know got changed in the car park for you know, because it was a bit of a drive. And yeah. then uh, we went in. We went in and um there was this guy there that was, you know, he, that we met and uh Mark Johnson, because he came from a rugby union background, he was yeah. like staring at this guy like eyes wide open. It was, it was like, wow. You know, so we met this guy and then uh, it was afterwards 
I said, the John I said, who, who was that? And he says, you don't know who that was? And I said, no. He says, that was J.P.R. Williams. <laughs> the legend, yeah. uh, you know. Well, he's just passed away, he's just sadly. But, uh, yeah, I was like, I've heard that name before. So, yeah, yeah we, met, we met him. The deal didn't happen. So, no. You know, so I was back to uh, right where we're going. And I ended up uh, at Featherston. Yeah, so how did that come about? Because they're a pretty big club. They've been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I watched I watched one of their uh, finals the year before who was going to get promoted to Super League. They had played Wakefield. Yeah. Okay. And they lost it. You know, I thought that, you know, it was a close game and I think they were really unlucky. So um got in contact with the club and Witness were also interested as well. So okay. um, I had the interview with Featherston first and then I had to get on the motorway to go to Witness and talk to them. Uh, after um, the Featherston, you know, after we spoke to them, we got on the motor and we headed down uh, the M62 and and uh, I was like, hey, that they sound like a really good club because they're like, you know, family oriented and everything. I said, yeah. I said well, I said, right, we, we turned around, went back to Featherston uh, yeah, and signed time for Featherston and then uh, rang witness it to say sorry, you know, stopping at Featherston. So, yeah, and at Featherston, no yeah, see you later. Yeah, at Featherston, at Featherston, it was like uh, Carl Hall was there, yeah, uh, Asa Amoni, Asa Amoni played for Tonga, and um, uh, Brendan Tudor. Oh, no he way, well. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and there was another awesome. Australian like. Wayne Simons, so there was a there was five of us. So okay. yeah, it was good to you know, it was good to get together and we had a really good season that year and all. Yeah, man. So he was on the PNG tour with you, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice, yeah. 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 Unassuming guy, nice, nice fellow. Another good Canterbury lad. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Um, so, uh, so you moved on to France. Was the next club you went to signing with? I don't even want to pronounce this. Tres Catalan, the same right? Tres Catalan, yeah. Tres Catalan. Okay. Well, the season was nearly coming to an end, and um, my brother, who was, you know, he was playing over in France. He says, "Oh, I said, bro, you want French season's nearly uh, starting now. You want to come and play?" So, yeah. I was like, "All oh, right, so." He they negotiated a contract with the, as they spoke the French and then and then um, yeah we we all went we flew into Barcelona and they picked us up. This is about I'd say three weeks after the um, first and season had finished. Mm-hmm. So yeah, straight into Perpignan, and uh, you know met met all the team there and that and uh, yeah like. I wanted to go because you know it's a different lifestyle. I wanted to see what it was like, and and it was it was fantastic. Yeah, lots of great food in France. So I did quite nicely there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, everything ended up uh, that week. I ended up playing. I think I arrived okay. on the Thursday. Arrived on the Thursday and played on the Sunday. So what's the language <laughs> barrier like? You're coming in. You probably don't speak a word of French. Like how do you how do you get amongst that? Well, it was the coach. Yeah, was speaking in French and that, and we were, there was a couple. I was playing with a couple of Australians here, uh, and um, it was like we had there was some some of the French boys that spoke broken broken English, okay. you know, and they're just t- just relaying, oh, you know, what was being said, and. Uh, in our team, we had like French international players. It was like uh, Didier Capistani, okay. Pascal Jumpy, Aurelian Colony, in you know, Don't these really. guys, and they could speak English. So, okay. uh, yeah, they helped, you know, with the translation. And then I think as you, as you were there longer and longer, you started picking up, picking up the words and, you know, and okay. speaking bro- broken French sort of thing that, uh, you yeah. understand it. Culture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. culture. The culture was really, uh, really nice. Nice, man. So, um, yeah. so did you ever struggle with like nerves going to new clubs all the time? Because you played for quite a few. Was it, did it bother you at all? I think 
you know, any club you go to, you're nervous. You don't know how they're going to take to you, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but there's always, uh, you know, a lot of people that support you, help you, and then you know, just to to fit in and okay. you know, with the with the Australians there, you know, we uh, you know we bonded pretty good, and um, you know, they made the stay a lot easier, okay. easier for us. And, yeah. Yeah, so you moved on to Workington Town to finish up your career in the top flight. Uh, what memories do you have of your final club? Because you played quite a few seasons for them, didn't you? I played uh, played three seasons. Um, yep. It's funny, when I came back from France, see, the quota used to be five overseas players. And coming back, when I came back from France, um, and I went to, went back to Featherston, because they wanted to you know sign us again uh, before I left. To France and okay. uh, when I went back, they said, "Oh, now they've uh, they've changed the uh, the system. Now there's only one overseas player per club, oh, mate. and that that signed an Australian." I was okay. like, "Oh, right. So what do I go from here?" So you know, because wife's from Cumbria, you know, it was a Workington team, and I knew I knew the coach at Workington. Okay. So I messaged them. And, you know, I said, "Oh, you know." Uh, can I come and play for you and all this and that? And he says, but your your class still class is an overseas player. He says, I'll tell you what. The uh they said, we'll, we'll sign a contract and we'll give you a lawyer and try and help you to get off your get off the overseas player. Okay. Uh, I went, right. So we got a lawyer and then we did some did some work, uh, you know, trying to trying to get me off. In the meantime, I I've got no club, okay. so and I've never played. I've never played rugby union before in my life. So I had a couple uh, games for Wigton Rugby Union, and uh, how'd you, you go? Know, I, still, I I still get ribbed. My mate Smelly, he, he played in that <laughs> game with me. He keeps uh, bringing it up all the time. I was playing prop. <laughs> really? <rugby> unions, <laughs> yeah, and so we we were playing down in Sheffield. And the first scrum that we had, it was our feet, you know, it was our ball. So yeah. we we're supposed to win it. So as soon as we packed, I went into the scrum and then when the, the force come from behind, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, what a shock. A lot of leg scrum. I was like, and we lost the ball. So oh. I was like, what are you ripping my neck? And then, and then uh, another scrum had come up and then again, I went, right, I'll prepare for this one. And we went in again and same again, same thing again. So the next scrum come up and I said, I'm not going in there. <laughs> I'm, not, oh, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going there. Get someone else. So I got the second row, I swap with the second row, and uh yeah. and then went into the second row. And at the end of the game, I was out playing in the centers. Yeah. So you know, rugby league scrum, rugby union scrum, totally different, isn't it? So different, yeah. eh? Oh. That was so funny. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, oh, anyway, that's cold. Anyway, they got me so, off the contract. Okay. The lawyers, the lawyers got me off the contract. And so, uh, yeah, I played there for three years until, you know, body was uh, breaking down. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I think in 2003, that was when I retired. Oh, yeah. And, Decent uh, career, though. And, yeah, and after I retired, came uh, well, the late Jed Stokes. He came over as the coach in oh, 2004, true. and he he brought with him uh, Johnny Limmer, yeah, uh, John Tui Mawalonga, and um, Lucy Sioni. Oh, and Lucy Tan Sioni! Oh, he's a legend. Yeah, and Tan Tani Tani Lava Lavi. So he brought them for Tane Manahiro. He was already at town. So there's five of them, oh, yeah. and uh, Jed tried to persuade me to come out of retirement <laughs> and play, and play with him. But yeah, but uh, I, my my knees were shattered by then. So yeah, you know, but it would have been it would have been great if uh, you know if I did. So it was, uh, oh, mate. Yeah. It was just time. It was <laughs> so that, time. Yeah, that was time. That was time. Yeah. So you've also had the honour of presenting a few uh, Kiwi superstars with their test jerseys. RTS, uh, Joe Tarpany and Simare Martin. What's that experience like, man? Yeah. Like, you know, realising well, someone's dream? Yeah. 
that was awesome. You know, it was 2013 World Cup. And, um, you know, the week of the game, they were playing Samoa in the first game. Okay. And so I made some calls to find out where Steve Kearney, like he was coaching them, where uh, they were based so I can get some tickets and oh, go cool. down and, you know, watch. So I left I left a message at the hotel because he wasn't in on Tuesday night. He rang me back on the Thursday. And, you know, we had a good chat. Uh, he says, oh, yeah, bro. He says, I'll get you some tickets and that. So, great. Organized the hotel down in yeah. Warrington because that was where the game was. And then, um, so I went to work the next day and uh, I was working up in Scotland. And my wife rang me up and said, oh, Steve's been on the phone. Yeah. He said, I think he uh, wants you to present the jerseys. So I was like, what? Okay. I said, wait. I said, wait, I'll get home. I'll give him a ring. Yeah. So that Friday, I rang him up. I said, I said, uh, what's how's it going? What's the what's the story? And he went, he said, well, it was Sonny Bill Williams that had uh, approached him on Thursday and said, instead of the um, the, the management giving out the jerseys, why don't we get someone to you know over here to give them out? And then he said, Wonderful. and then he he mentioned, he said, do you know Hydro? And Steve went, yeah, I was on the phone to him last night getting him tickets. He said, well. You can give him a call. So. Awesome. But that was it. So so now, so I had to go down. He said, oh, yeah, come uh, be here on the Saturday at 6 o'clock. Yeah. And that was staying in Liverpool at the Hilton Hotel. Right. So I was like, so I was stressed out. I was like, right, we've got to book another hotel <laughs> for the Saturday. We'll find somewhere. Um, and then and, uh, and then I thought, oh, no, I've got to make, I know I've got to make a speech. I know, oh, no. Steve knows that Steve knows that I don't do speeches. I can't, you know. No. <laughs> so I wrote. I was like, "What do I write? What do I say?" Because these are the best players, the elite players of the country. I was yeah. like, so I didn't have much time, so I, I put something together, wrote something down, and then I said to my daughter, "I said, oh, here, yeah, can you time me with the put the timer on for my my speech?" <laughs> and so I said my speech. She clicked the button. She said, "One minute 30. I went, oh man! <laughs> I was just, I, I had to go with, I had to go with it. We got so, with a minute thirty. Yeah. So we got we we get down to the hotel and um, you know Tony Ira meets us and takes yep. us upstairs and he says, "Oh, just wait here. Uh, I'll come back for you." And so there's a big conference room before the doors close and I could see in there just one door open and I could see you know a few of the lads on the table and then uh, he came out and got us and. We went through, and I went one way to sit with. Uh, I was with uh, Isaac Luke and Kieran Ford, yeah. you know, on, on their. Oh, I think it was yeah. the leadership table, and then it was like a big rectangle, and all the staff, all the players, and then my family went around the other side, and then uh, he says, "Right, you know." So I'm talking with the boys, and Steve says, "Right, we eat now." So we went and got got our food, started eating, and then they played the videos of who was. Uh, of the families of who's getting uh, their debut, and yeah, it was RTS and Sam uh, Sam Moore. We were in there watching the video, and then I had to give the <laughs> my speech after one minute thirty. Oh, I sat down, I was like, uh, you know, so uh, it was, that was a great experience for myself and for my family to be there. Now, in 2016, they come over for the Four Nations. And that was, yeah. you know, the team was uh, staying up in Carlisle. Okay. It wasn't far. So, yeah. So, um, Nadine Conlon, she, you know, gave me a call, left a voicemail, and likes us to come and present the jerseys to the players and that. So, yeah, it was, it was great. They ended up uh, another speech I had to make. And yeah. Like, oh. And this speech was only 10 seconds longer than my <laughs> <laughs> a minute 40. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, again, uh, Joseph Tapani, you know, his jersey and um Tamari Martin. And then yep. also forgot it was um Fisher Harris. It was his oh, wow. he made his debut as well. But he came off he came off the bench. Yeah. So yeah, that game they played Scotland and, and the wind was howling. They played it at Wilkinson yeah. Ground and and okay. they drew 80 more. Yeah, so that was Sorry, uh, what? <laughs> that was, yeah. That was a big surprise, but uh 
Yeah. Yeah, that was that. It was a, it was an honor just to you know be back amongst them and that too. Yeah, an experience. Sure. And look where those players are at now. Like they are the yeah. best players of New Zealand. There, yeah, like yeah. Oh, it's it's so awesome. good. He's back in rugby league. How good it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been missed. Yeah. Oh, what a wasted rugby. No offense to rugby fans, but what a waste. <laughs> you know. No. <laughs> All right, man. We've got a few fan questions for you. So firstly, Aaron Whitaker, your your mate in the, the 96 reserve final. Uh, Willie Horner, uh, they just wanted to say a massive hello from everyone. And Darren Avery wanted to say you were a great roommate. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love, I love those blokes. So, you know, they're, they're friends for life and they're really good, you know, really good blokes. Eh? So, uh, yeah, it's great to uh, great to hear that. that they're still well in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. That's cool, it's man. Good. And so Mike Harrison wants to know, do you have any plans to settle back in New Zealand or is UK home for you? You know, I've always said that, uh, you know, you never say never. I mean, you know, I could come back. Uh, you know, Nice families all over here. Mine's all back in NZ, but you know, we're coming back in uh, in November for holiday. So, um, you know, I'd never say never that uh, come back to New Zealand. Oh, nice. Okay, so uh, Tiari Tounoa, what is your fastest time over one hundred meters, and what was your optimum playing weight at your best fitness level? Uh I don't think I've ever been timed over 100 meters. Uh, it was too far to run. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't that fast. You know, uh, probably over short distances. Yeah, maybe, but not over the longer. You know, I leave that up to the the speed merchants or the backs in that. But um, yeah, sorry. What was the? Uh, oh, was my your, weight. Oh, yeah, yeah, playing weight. I was up to, I would say about 100, 102 kilos. I was happy at, and then you know playing prop, uh, I had to put ten kilos on because they thought I was too, uh, too small for, <laughs> for really? to play against the big Australian boys. So when I put more weight on, I got you know, I got stuck into the the gym and that and training. And then, yep. You know, it just got too big and then lost mobility and you yeah. know it's. Yeah, so 102, I was, I was fine. You know, I was uh, my best playing weight. Lean and mean, nice. Okay, so I'm going to finish with a few fun questions. I always ask everyone, who's going to win the NRL in 2024? Uh, well, you know, I support. Last year, I started supporting the the Tigers because um, really, my cousin Shalom, her uh, her son, uh, Jareen Buller, he plays for them, so. I'd like to see good. them up there. I'd like to yep. see them up there, but you know, Benji's got a, got, you know, got a hard job. But he I does. would say, you know, the Warriors for life. Uh, I'm, all, you know, Warriors, Warriors to do it. No worries. Warriors or the Broncos. <laughs> Warriors or the Broncos. Yeah. Nice, mate. Uh, so, what is your favorite TV show of all time? Oh, I love. Yeah, you know, watch it every day during the week. Uh, Emmerdale. Emmerdale. Right. And Coronation and Coronation Street straight after that. Nice. So we'll give you both of them. It's only fair. You're our legend. So uh last question. If you were on death row, what would your final meal be? Oh, that's an easy one. It's, uh, it'll be a sirloin steak, chips and eggs, uh, with mushroom, corn on the cob, and layered with peppercorn sauce. So easy. Oh, I that's love peppercorn sauce, mate. That is the best yeah, on stage. Beautiful. So good. <laughs> awesome, man. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Hytro, for coming on the show. Go back in the day with me. It's been an absolute privilege to hear about your career and to meet you, man. I'm, I'm always in awe when I get to meet you guys, and it's just been fascinating and really interesting. So thank you so much uh, for giving up your time, man. It's really appreciated. Hey, thank you for having me. Um, you know, I think you're doing a great job, and Keep doing what you're doing, and uh, you know a lot of people want to hear everyone else's stories and that. So, thank you very much. Uh, you're most welcome, man. It's an absolute pleasure for me to do this. So, uh, thank you again, and thank you to everyone at home for watching and all those listening on Spotify. Make sure you you know follow the channels, YouTube, 
Uh, get on the Facebook page. It's full of ex, you know, players. Uh, there's so many on there now. I, I'm just absolutely loving it. So get on the Point of Difference Rugby League page and, uh, you know, follow the Spotify and all that stuff. You know what to do. So, uh, <laughs> again, thank you, Hytro, for coming on the show. I've been your host, Dave, and we'll see you guys next time for kickoff. Full time.